There's got to be a masculine way to do yas. Yes. Y'all. No. Y'all. Yes. We Welcome are... to another episode mm. of the History Hyenas. We are here. I'm Chris Stefano. I am a true gay Giannis P. A TBG. TBG's only, cuzzy. True blue gays. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for checking in. Um, we got a great podcast today, as always, but today is fucking dope. Oh and my it's God. Yeah. Another episode, uh, piggybacking off another one of our romantic history tours that we did. Yeah, we love doing walking tours. Because we should hold hands during one of those just to see what the tour guide says. I, yeah, what could they say? Well, a lot of the tour guides for BigOnion.com, we are giving BigOnion.com so many shout outs. Please, I hope you guys are going to take the tours. They are not a sponsor, but and I guess now they'll never be because we gave it to them for free. Why would they ever pay? But, you know, um, capitalism. But but we sh I don't think, I think if we held hands and we made out in the middle of the tour, they wouldn't care <laughs> because they're all progressive graduate students. They would be like, that's what New York's about. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. what Mr. Panos would call San Francisco string beans. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he calls them, San Francisco string beans. San Francisco string beans. They um, yeah, they uh, they do good stuff. Yeah, it's great tours. And if they ever heard this, they probably wouldn't even want our sponsor. Well, yeah, they'd the be like, "We loved it until you said the word fumes, fumes. and then we were out." Yeah, we're I mean, about history, not fumes. We've objectified both female uh, tour guides. Well, um, you know why we do that? Why? Because we're fucking history hyenas. That's what. We are from the animal kingdom, and we can't even trace our lineage because we are fucking wild. Cause uh, there's no way I could tame my pseudo penis. No. <laughs> How fucking wild is that? Pseudo penis. Hyenas give birth through their females give birth through their pseudo penises. Yeah. How did wild is that, Bardo? Did By the way, that? Bardo's here. Well, yeah. well, let's fucking introduce her. Bardo Church is here. White wasp. Zach Isis face. Uh, where's Mini Mussolini? Is he not coming today? He's gay. He said gay. He's getting chewed out by Hitler about oh. uh, yeah, how he hasn't been able to take grease from the last episode. Yeah, many moose. Yeah. But um, yeah, so yeah. I also got big news. What happened? I got big news, cuz. Oh, yeah. And me and you know it because we were just rolling down. Yes. Me and you. We're about to get into the episode and what we're talking about. Me and Chris just went because we're so thorough. We're such hyenas. We went back down to retrace our steps to make sure we're giving it to you guys correct. Because you know what this podcast is about? Historical accuracy. Yes. But I got big news, cuz. What's the big news? I told you already now I want to all the people yes i want to tell all the hyenas out oh, there i know what this is yeah yeah i figured out my hair Woo! bardo hairspray cuz hairspray the fucking gel doesn't work the way it works with chrissy it doesn't work with i me. got a german nazi head right but hairspray cuz has my shit been in place your and hair... there's been some pretty strong winds out there cuz it's march in new york city and we were walking around downtown high wind area skyscraper area your hair has not moved since 2 15 p.m that's a beautiful thing and it's fucking currently 408 and it also looks full it looks full it looks good cuz you look good i'm telling you you look great Thanks, you look great. Cause. I should, you know. Some... Am I a cute kid, cuz? You're a cute kid. You're a hottie with a body. <laughs> Yo, a couple of cuties with smoothies. Cuz, I'm a little congested. I'm a hottie with a snotty right now. <laughs> I was picking my nose a lot, no? Yeah, you yeah, did. You dig a lot. You did yeah. a lot, too. Just in the car, too. You don't care. I pick my nose in public. Yeah. I eat boogers. Yeah, I, you're you're yeah. Uh, yeah, you're not a fully developed adult. My kid eats picks her nose now too, and her mom gets mad at me. She's like, "Why is Delilah picking her nose?" I'm like, "I don't know. Probably fucking from you." you. Yeah, you do it right in front of her, right? Yeah, I pick the nose. I tell Delilah, "You can't pick your nose." And you eat them, cuz? Well, yeah. I mean, protein. Else, I gotta stay jacked. <laughs> I got a protein out. I mean, what else are you going to do with them, right? Yeah, that's what I yeah. do for protein. I eat boogers and suck dicks. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of protein, a lot of semen, uh, yeah. a lot of protein and semen. Cause Girls should know that. Look, yeah. we're not only a history podcast, we're also a nature podcast. So let's throw in a little nature fact. Latest studies, semen, a lot of protein, very healthy for you girlies yeah. and, oh. and, and true blue gays. I'm going to put out some new designer way, jizz flavor. <laughs> Yo, you know what's wild too about about something uh, I learned when I, you know my uh, when I when I had a, a baby. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't have the baby. I had no, my pseudo penis. A, yeah, if, you if I was hyena, penis, I would have. You would have. Um, semen actually has natural properties in it that induce labor. So during the later stages, like once you're like at at the forty weeks gestation, um, the 
OBGYNs encourage uh, women to swallow loads. Really? To induce labor. Yep. And that's what happened with that's what happened with us. She was, baby was a couple of days late, swallowed a little loady load. And it next boom. thing you know, pops out the baby. Wow. Yeah. Wow. See? So, so sucking dick is positive. Wow. Yeah. There so, you go, ladies. You heard it from two of true blue gays, OG by one. I never could ever I could never remember that acronym. O B G Y N. O B G Y N. O B Cuck Kenobi. O B Cucks Kenobi's right here. Giannis Yanni P. O B one Cuck, no big. Yo, so you got good news about your hairspray, and I got good news about the podcast, everybody. So we've made a fucking change. It's been beautiful. Okay, we've made a change. So now, we're going to give you the entire podcast for free. It's uh, Christmas every fucking day. It's Christmas every day. We're giving you everything for free. On There's no half an hour for you, for the freebies, half an hour Patreon, none of that shit. The whole thing is coming at you for free. So, but what that means is for us, you know, at least is what, what we want to talk to you guys about and girls and others. Um, we're giving you everything for free. And, you know, we appreciate all the support on our History Hyenas, on the Bay Ridge Boys. We, we appreciate all that. But listen, we're making independent content and we're just asking you to consider, just consider becoming a member of our cuz community on patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Because if you become a member there, not only will you be supporting us and helping us make the podcast and our Bay Ridge Boy videos, which thank you very much, thank you for your service, you also receive dope shit. I mean, you're going to get a lot of dope rewards. I think one of the dopest parts of becoming a Patreon member, um, becoming a member of our cuz community, is you get our history tour videos. Yes. I love making those. They're hilarious. Yes. Those are the behind-the-scenes videos that me and Chris make constantly yes. when we're doing these tours and we're walking around New York City and we're amongst the history and trying to imagine what it was like uh, back then. And uh, guess what? You also get your name read on this podcast starting today starting today if you're a member of our patreon community if you're a member of our cuz community today we're going to read out everyone who joined up for patreon because it's the first one but then moving forward you become a new member we're going to read out your name and uh also being uh being a member of uh of our cuz community on patreon.com slash bay ridge boys you're going to get bonus podcasts so today we're going to talk about gangs in new york but for the patreon members only we're going to talk even about get even more specific about certain characters who are live at the times of the gangs in new york uh uh period Woo! in the 1860s yeah we're talking about master juba oh yeah you want to give it away well Very yeah interesting cat no i'm teasing oh, it okay we're yeah. not gonna tell him about no, it don't. but if you want to hear it we're doing a bonus podcast it's available right now if you're listening to this on patreon.com the master juba bonus episode by the history highness highness all right so without further ado so today's podcast is uh based off the gangs in new york it's specifically about the five points so real quick, I just want to tell you the five points. Uh, it's a neighborhood in New York City. It was a neighborhood in New York City. It's still there today, of course, but... Uh, if you uh, use your imagination. If you got to use... You got to yeah. Peter Pan that shit. You got to Peter Pan that shit. Um, and it's where four streets, Anthony Street, which is now Worth Street, Cross Street, which is now Moscow Street, Orange Street, which is now Baxter Street, and Little Water Street, which is now not even a street anymore, converged. And at that point, it, the, the four intersections made... Five points, uh, you know, right there, Paradise Square is what they called it. And that was called the Five Points um, neighborhood in uh, New York City. Uh, and it was a pretty sh fucking crazy town. I mean, it was that part of New York City was, um, you know, written about. They made the movie Gangs of New York about it. I'm sure you guys have heard of the Five Points. I mean, everybody's heard of it. I mean, had you heard of it before the movie Gangs of New York? I had not heard of it before the movie wow. Gangs of I think most people hadn't heard of it before the you movie. You don't think Gangs. so? I don't think so. You think Scorsese put it on the map? Yeah, and a lot of those uh, street names, uh, they're still named that today, right? Or well, are they all different? Well, well, a few of them are the same. Well, Cross Street uh, is, is it used to be called Cross, now it's called Moscow. Oh, that's Moscow. And without the W, uh -huh. Mos Moscow. Uh -huh. um, Orange Street uh -huh. is used to be called Orange Street, but now that's Baxter Street, currently Baxter Street. And uh, uh, Anthony Street. Anthony. Anthony. Ant Anthony Street. That used to be called Anthony Street, but now it's called Worth Street. So, Wait, so they had an Anthony Street back then? They had then? an Anthony Street, But yeah. they didn't even, Italians weren't even there yet when they did that. Yeah, Italians didn't come in the 1900s. But I guess, you know, everybody prays to St. Anthony when they lose something. I guess so, but there was no Italians there. Yeah. So that's weird that they had an Anthony Street. You know, and there was no Italians in that neighborhood, so guess what that means? The food probably sucked over there. Probably fucking sucked. Yeah. But now, you know what I those was, streets okay. are, yeah, I was just saying, now those, they're, they're called, uh, it's called Worth Street now? Called Worth Street now. But that's how we say it. I think the people who inhabit what used to be the Five Points would call it Pisces Yeah. Because it's Chinatown. Chinatown, baby. They got a different way to pronounce stuff. And, uh, yeah, and 
you know, that time, the five points, you know, what's interesting to me is with the no Italians there is how the food had to be awful and the racism probably wasn't as bad as we thought <laughs> because the only <laughs> Italians are the most racist people and they make racism as funny as possible. They do. So it probably like, you know, I don't think it was as bad because Italians are the ones that really bring racism. Let's Let's talk candidly here. When it comes to food. Italians, number one, and like we were talking about before this cast when we were hanging out. Yeah. Not even close. Right. Not even close. Right. That's how good Italian food is. So Italians do food and fucking racism like nobody else. Nobody's even close. They are the Michael Jordan of racism. Absolutely. And food. And food. Um, so can you imagine this, cousins? We're talking about five points. This is before Italians even came to this country, yeah. which may, I'm shocked there was a fucking street called Anthony. We're talking mid-1800s, right, yeah. is where we're going to focus on. Mid-1800s, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was one of those places where if you watch the movie Gangs in New York um, by Martin Scorsese, fucking great Italiano guy, uh, Martin Scorsese, he directed the movie, and um, you know... From what our research, from what we could tell, from our research, he really did a good job of capturing, um, like the essence of what the neighborhood was, like the true, the true racism there, the true uh, hygiene, the, the the true uh, conditions, the true poor hygiene, the true like sentiment of the time, like what people were really mad at, what they liked, what they didn't like. Um, the from what I saw, from what I you know heard from historians, the recreate the you know how they recreated the town, which they, that was a studio in Rome. That's where they made that movie, just some studio lot in Rome. But they really Scorsese went to like great lengths to try to make it look like exactly what it probably looked like and felt like in the mid eighteen hundreds. Yeah, fucking, yeah. I mean, it wasn't a documentary that he made, but you know he focused on a couple characters. Sure, but he did capture the the ambiance. The ambiance. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So basically, so who you had there was. Um, a lot of, first of all, it was a lot of gangs. Of course, a big, big, big time, uh, big gang activity. But mainly, what you had is you had uh, blacks, you had uh, the Native Americans, which were not like Sacagaweas. Yeah. We're not talking about. We're not talking about the politically correct term for the Cleveland Indians. Right. We're talking about people who consider themselves native to America. Protestants. Protestants. The White Wasps. So the Bardo the, Churches of the world. The Bardo Churches of the world. Those were the fucking Bowery boys. I don't think Bardo would have lived in the Five Points though. He wouldn't have been a tough guy, though. No. Yeah, he would have. He would have had to. He would have been called creative. You know, he would have been creative. He would have yeah. been creative, which is code word for fucking gay. Gay. He would have yeah. lived uptown too. A lot of up the Upper East and Upper West Sides was where the real rich and wealthy lived. Yeah. Um, still to this day, kind of. Yeah, they they were trying to get away from the five points. Um. So you had you had the you had the the blacks who were you know so, oh, were slavery wasn't abolished in New York until the 1820s. So and and I still think even after they abolished it in the eighteen twenties, I'm sure you still had people not giving a fuck because yeah. it's the eighteen twenties. Not like you know, word takes a while to get around. So there was still, unfortunately, probably a lot of black people being enslaved. And um, there was a lot of ones, a lot of freed ones, absolutely that were freed from when New York was New Amsterdam, and a lot of them worked for the uh, the West Indian Dutch. What's that called? The, uh, the Dutch West Indies Company. The Dutch West Indies Company. Yeah. Yeah. So a few of them had freed some of their workers. Yeah. I'm not saying, yeah, and you know, they and you know, I think being free uh, back then is like quotes free. I'm sure yeah. that they still lived in fear and were, you know, persecuted big time. I'm yeah. sure of it. Yeah. Um, and then you had the Irish. The Irish, the Irish were a big, big part of New York City history because they had come over the 1840s had a big Irish potato famine, so they started leaving Ireland and coming to New York in droves, and they were viewed by uh, the Native Americans who were, you know, the native. Presbyte uh, Protestant uh, New Yorkers as shit people. Yeah, they I hated mean, the Catholics. Talk about, yeah, the racism against the Irish was the same as it was against the blacks at that time. They were both equally hated groups. They were fucking hated. They hated, as, as a matter of fact, when the Irish were coming off the uh, the ships, they would get rocks thrown at them, potatoes thrown at them, told to get back into their uh, boats and go home. They would be killed, murdered, and one during the time of the Civil War, the Irish uh, would come off the you would come off the ship, and this is a scene in Gangs of New York, and it's actually historically accurate. They would come off the ship, sign a piece of paper that would make them a citizen, no test anymore. You know, now you got to go through a thousand tests to become a citizen. You would sign a piece of paper to become a citizen, and then the next piece of paper uh, that you would sign once you became a citizen is your uh, right to waive your citizenship and join the army against your will. So these soldiers would come, land on the docks in New York City, take off their clothes that they were wearing from Ireland, put on a Union uh uh, uniform, a, a Union Army uniform, and then march right 
get in ships and go either down south or wherever the war was, probably down south, and fight in the war and die. So a lot of Irish, there were certain groups of Irish men, there were uh, you know, known guys, a few known guys that they never really stepped foot in, they only stepped foot on the docks, on the pier. And then they got and went and fought and they would get paid whatever bullshit money they would be given. And they would just be told, listen, you have to fight for your country. Because a lot of the native New Yorkers, like, um, you know, Giannis had mentioned the Bowery Boys. Um, you know, that was the character, uh, Daniel day Lewis's character, uh, uh, Bill the Butcher. Um, that's the character he portrayed. They didn't want to fight in the Civil War. And they didn't want anything to do uh, with these, with these, uh, this, this new land with the Union seceding, they, they they didn't want any of uh, with the Confederate seceding and all that. They didn't want any of that shit. What they wanted was they just wanted their country the way it used to be, which was being you know having blacks enslaved and doing the jobs that they didn't want to do, and having the Irish come in and do the jobs that they didn't want to do. So when you're when you start you know when you when they when they when the uh, Bill the Butcher and and these like elite people uh, started having to go to the war. It was a big problem, and then they start draft riots and stuff because they don't, nobody wanted to go. Uh, they only wanted to send the Irish and the blacks to go because they didn't want to fight. The, listen, here's the thing: in the 1800s, think about it. Like white people, they didn't care. They didn't care about slavery and stuff. I mean, it's horrible to think about now, but it's just the truth of what it was back then. They didn't care about slavery. They were like, I, I don't want to go fight a black man's war. Well, that, they and they all hated each other. Yeah, I and mean, they were all competing for. For jobs, and then there was the fear that if these if the slaves were freed, they would take right. They would take jobs. The native people, the products. Let's just call them fucking wasps. wasps. The wasps. The, the Irish. Bardos. At this time, it was wasps in New York. Wasps, Irish, and blacks. That's basically what you had, right. you know. And uh, they all were kind of fearful of each other. But there was also a lot of intermingling between them, probably too. It was probably not that much different than today. If you picture a poor neighborhood where those people lived together, the gangs probably hated each other. Because that was all about fucking territory and jobs and competing for fire. You know, back then, the firefighters was, uh, you know, they, they 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 went to the highest bidder. So the, a lot of these gangs were fire were volunteer. Well, almost all, the, oh. almost the entire fire department were gangs. Yeah, they were just the gangs. Pug Uglies, the Bowery Boys. They were all they were all uh, these these gangs just made up the you know original FDNY. And a lot of times houses would burn to the ground because anytime there was a fire, if a member of the Pug Uglies got there first, they would put a. A, a barrel overneath the over the fire hydrant and only lift it up for other pug uglies to 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 fight that fire. So if the Bowery boys came, they would be like, "Where's the fire hydrant?" And pug uglies would be like, "Oh, I don't know." And then it would cause a big fight. And then the cops would come, and the cops were made up of all the Irishmen who the native you know gang members hated anyway. So there'd be fights between the cops and the firemen in the streets, and the houses would burn down. Yeah, I mean, put it this way though, this was a neighborhood with new immigrants who were fighting to survive. Most. Above and beyond them being like gang, uh, gang members and stuff, these were just immigrants. A lot of them were trying to make money. A lot of them did have jobs, and they were sending money back, trying to get their family members to come with them. This was just the beginning of the modern America, and that's why I love the five points, because pre-New York at this time, beginning of the 19th century, you know, when these wave of immigrants, immigrants came from Ireland, no Italians in America, which is fucking hard to imagine. Right. This time, there's no fucking Italians. Irish, wasps, Native Americans, blacks, that's your country. And the country to this point had just sort of been Jefferson's kind of country, meaning, you know, just Native Americans, the black slaves and some freed slaves. And, uh, you know, the descendants, the Protestant des descendants of, um, you know, the first wave of, of uh, immigrants that came here from England and whatever to escape, uh, you know, religious per persecution. That was America. It was agrarian. Now factories are starting. Now job. they need jobs in the north. Yeah. The ste steam, steam is powering shit. So that's rendering kind of slavery, you know, the cotton ginny and all that shit's happening. Slavery's not really needed anymore, but they need workers. So now fucking the Irish are coming. So this is really, the five points is really the beginning of modern America. The America, the America we know in urban areas and cities and these ethnicities that became American, like your boy Patty Fly Boys, Patty Fly Balls considers himself American. He's American, but he's as Irish as they come, and he probably goes back to the Pug Uglies. Yeah, he probably Pug, Pug Ugly, and he, uh, I'm sure he would have been. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing too. What's something that switched back in the day? All these gangs. See, big thing that happened during the uh, gangs in New York period and that Five Points period was this guy was Tammany Hall. This guy 
Boss Tweed, corrupt politician, and Tammany Hall was basically Democrats. That was the old school Democrats, and they would um, they would rig voting elect. They would rig rig the voting uh, booths. What they would do was, do you remember this? What they yeah, talk, this the is barber, sick. dope. Yeah. So what they would do is, if you you would first of all being an uh, when you would come off, there was usually only one guy not throwing potatoes and rocks at you if you were an Irish immigrant coming off those ships, and that was Boss Tweed and the members of Tammany Hall. Because what they wanted from the Irish was, because you just signed a piece of paper and you instantly became a citizen, what they wanted was your vote. So what they would do is say, look, come in here, we'll protect you, um, we'll give you jobs, you give you a job right away, you don't have to go fight in the war, we'll give you a job right away, the only thing you got to do is you got to vote Tammany Hall. We were buying your votes. And they would tell them like three months before the election, whatever election that was, they would say, grow your beard out, don't, get a, don't shave your beard or cut your hair. You would go in the day of voting, vote, then you would walk out the back door and right there, right across the hall or in another room, a secret door, there would be a barber. And the barber would cut your beard down and cut cut, cut your mustache down to like a handlebar mustache. So you look like a different person back then. You'd go in and vote. Second time. Then you'd go, after the second time you voted, they would shave the mustache off, you'd go in and vote a third time. So now you got one person voting three times, all for Tammany Hall, uh, and, bought, and there were... Uh, this this went on for years, and Tammany Hall would win election after election after election. And so, when New York is primarily a Democrat place, but the, the thing is with Democrats though back then is you got to think of it like the Democrats they weren't like lefty, they weren't like left, you know, kind of. When I think of Democrats, I think Democrats are like you know free spirited, f not I don't know fun loving, but you know they're more they're liberal. It wasn't like that back then. No. It would be the Republicans were the Democrats and the Democrats were the Republicans. They switched sides. They switched sides. When? Yeah. I don't know. Do you know when that happened, Giannis? Ah, man, that would that'd be an episode for another podcast. Yeah, I that'd don't be know. a podcast for another episode. I don't know when I that... I mean, an episode for another podcast. Yeah, you fucking... <laughs> you got Alzheimer's? I just switched sides, see? Yeah, episode see? Episode for another podcast or a podcast for another episode. you bisexual? A little bit. Yeah. Little bit. Like guys and girls. But, Joe, New York was corrupt as fuck back then. And it's you don't think it is still? It still is, but back then it was... Fuck you, de Blasio. It was corrupt. No. Like, that's how things work. And even when you think about these uh, these fires that happened and all these gangs that, that had their different fire companies, you know back then that, like... They started fires and then showed up just 100%. to get paid, you know? Yeah. Well, fires happen all the time. I mean, then. the Italian, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, the mafia still do that. I yeah. mean, mafia fucking start fires for no reason. Insurance yeah. money. Insurance cause. money, cuz. Um, so, yeah. So that, you know, that's, <laughs> oh, shit. That was going on. I like, I like, I like. I'm in big into gangs. I mean, I was never. Were you ever in a gang as a kid? I was never in a gang. No. No. I was in one gang. You were in a gang? Yeah. You're a bad kid. I was. I was in a gang. I forgot what it was called. I wow, honestly did forgot your what mother it was know about that? No, but she won't listen to this podcast because we curse. She what? All right. She told me that. She's like, I can't listen. Not curse. if you're gonna curse like yeah, that. Yeah. My mom won't even accept my Facebook request because she's like, I don't want to know what you're she up to with your sins. Curse, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Forty Thieves. This is one gang which I liked. Did some research. I like the Forty Thieves. There. This was. Uh, they were around between the 1820s and the 1850s. Five points. They were Irish thugs, and what they were good at is they would pickpocket, and uh, they, they would. The, the big thing was they would pick pickpocket, and uh, under the leadership of this guy Edward Coleman, who in the movie The Gangs of New York, um, he's the guy that gets the axe to his back. I forget what the actor's name is, but he's been in a lot of shit. He's been in like fucking Braveheart, and he's just like your classic Irish face. Just your. If you want like a guy to play like a classic Irish fuck. It's this guy. Right. I forgot what his fucking name is. Irish face. We'll I, yeah, Irish, Irish face. face, Edward Coleman. Um, and the real Edward Coleman got... Uh, see, like, all these guys, like, they start out... They start out with, you know, like, these noble causes where, like, he was saying, like, he was, you know, he was robbing. He would be robbing and then giving the money back to the poor because, you know, the Irish were being uh, misrepresented and he was like an Irish Robin Hood. Then they always get hung. He always got hung and his body got set on fire. Yeah, that's like, what it's happened just what happens. Yeah. Is it just karma? Yeah. You don't believe in karma. Well, I just think back then everyone met a brutal end at some point. Yeah, you didn't die easy back then, no. right? Even that one dude, there was one dude of a uh, whipped gang. He uh, he uh, he ended up going and fighting in a war, became a hero in uh, World War One. Actually, what? yeah, because he was who the, the gangs went all the way up until the Italians. It's funny. Yes, we will get there. I don't want to go there, but the Ita I like how the Italians came in and fucking unified the whole five. Oh points. yeah, yeah, the five points gang. Was... Yo, because Italians are good at organized crime. Yeah, that's another thing they're good at. Food, organized yeah. crime, racism. Yeah, they're the. I mean, the Jordan of that. So you yeah. had all these Irish gangs, all these Native American, all these wasp. Let's just call them wasp gangs. Yeah, and then the Italians came to this country. Like, what? If, what the fuck are you guys doing? 
You know, yeah. Why are you guys all fucking fighting each other? There's money to be made here. And these guys are like, fuck you, we're from Ireland. Get out of here, you fucking greasy. Pe-. And like, listen, I'll right, give you a fucking Guinness, but this is what you're going to do. Now you're my soldier. We're exactly. going to make, make some real fucking money here. Yeah. We're going to make some real fucking money. And then it became, and then it became like a. Just became the Five Points Gang. That's what it was called. Unified the motherfucker. So 40 Thieves, Pickpockets. Bowery Boys, um, this was the one who I said, is da- this is Daniel day Lewis's character, Bill the Butcher, you know, with the long top hats. The Bowery Boys, this was like, you know, I would say one of the most storied gangs of all of New York. Um, and these guys were Lower Manhattan guys, and uh, they clashed. They would clash with the Irish Five Points gang uh, during the 1840s, 50s, and 60s. Um, but the Bowery Boys, what was different about them, what was dope, is they were dressed elegant. They were dressed fucking dope as fucking snazzy. Yeah. Because their whole thing was like, listen, we're not like these Irish dirt bags okay we're not these we're gonna we, we, we're, we're fashionable we're wearing big top hats we got big dicks we fucking want to look like the monopoly man when we bang you out <laughs> yeah and a lot of them just had like real jobs like butchers absolutely like they, uh, william tool actually was an actual butcher william tool and william tool is the original who they well bill the butcher was a guy who existed right but but the actual character daniel day lewis's character we learned was a mix of a few different guys yes yeah, uh Primarily two. William Toole. William Toole and uh, John Hines. Hines. And uh, Hines. They Thomas were both, Hines. Thomas Hines was the bare knuckle boxer. And we actually got a video of Thomas Hines' crib on our Patreon if you want to go look at it. But it's only, Check it out, kiddies. It's only for Patreon, man. Box. It's only for our kiddies. And we also got videos of the five points up there, too. We do. We do. Um, so Bowery Boys, they were elegant as fuck. Um, and they weren't on, the, you know, when they, like Yana said, when they weren't, you know, being dirtbags, they 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 would go to saloons, back alleys, and they would uh, they would always have like these bloody turf wars um, with rival gangs like the Dead Rabbits. The Dead Rabbits were the gang. If you remember, if you've seen the gangs in New York, that opening scene, it's the Bowery Boys, the ones we just talked about, versus the Dead Rabbits, Liam Neeson's crew. Which Liam Neeson, by the way, I think lives in my building. Somebody yeah? told me Liam Neeson lives in the building that I live in. Oh, which is- <laughs> <laughs> if does. Liam Neeson, bro, if I ever see Liam, if I'm ever looking at my window and Liam Neeson comes scaling down, I'm going to try to grab his. Irish deck. You got a couple. You got also got a couple of basketball. Players the Brooklyn like, Nets live in there. Yeah. Um, but Liam Neeson, live, Lee, that has to be one of many homes. Liam, ne- Liam yeah. Neeson, one of apartments. Liam Neeson owns. Yeah. Um, he's not even American. No, he's fucking Irish. Yeah. Liam and Liam. I like Liam Neeson a lot. Do you like his movies? He's a good guy. Yeah, I fucking like him. What you? Well, he's he, great. The Chad Rabbits. He's a good guy. Hi, you're from fucking Ireland. So you're fuck, fucking. Um, they love the word fuck Irish. Fuck. He's uh, fucking gay. And they like they like the word shite. A fucking shite. I gotta take a shite. I'll take a fucking shite on your face, you That's fucker. How I, I talk to my daughter sometimes in like an Irish accent when I don't want to like use like an actual shit cur- curse word. I'm like, did you just shite your pants? Did you fucking did shite your Did you just your shite pants? your diaper? The thing about back then, the wasps hated the Irish, but we got to we got to be honest and historically accurate here. It's yeah. kind of fucked up. Okay. They both hated the blacks. Yeah. The blacks had it the worst. The blacks did have it the worst, but I think at that time in the 1850s, I think the Irish, I think uh, according to the natives, I think they hated them both the same. Or you think they hated the blacks even more than the Irish? I think they might. I mean, depending on who. I know I know the Irish and the and the blacks kind of mingled a little bit. Uh, you know, there was even uh, the, that one building, that story building that was supposed to be really violent. That had oh, the uh, the old the uh, the old mission, the old mission by the where it's right now by the tombs where the the uh, the prison, the tombs is right now right. downtown Manhattan. Exactly. Look how fucking smart my boy Chris. Yeah. Is. I feel like there's a scene in Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. yeah. Fucking. Uh, yeah. How, how about he got a number? How about them apples, Chris? You fucking date. But in that building, there were different floors, yes. and those floors were were divided by kind of Irish floor. There was an Irish floor, a black floor. You know what right. I mean? But now, so they mingled in that way. But they also kind of stayed separate. And one side of the five points was Irish, and the other side was black. And see, and what they say is, you know, with the five points. Uh, Mission, uh, you know, classic building. We, you know, the exact spot is. It's really right in between two courthouses now. I, I'm not. I'm forgetting the exact street, um, but you know, they said it was like the the most dangerous place in the city. Probably they said the world. They said that it averaged a murder a night for five years now. And they said there's a one notorious story of a of a, a little girl five years old who was playing with a penny and was murdered for her penny and that there was thousands of bodies buried underneath that building now look i'm not saying that that you know that it wasn't dangerous back then but that wasn't true because when they excavated the building they found they didn't find any bodies i think they found one body the story of the little girl was never uh confirmed and like police 
plotters back then. And the city of New York was actually even even in the midst of the uh, uh, five points and all and the slums. It was really America's first slum. Was only averaging New York City was only averaging a murder a month. Yeah. So there's about twelve to fifteen murders a year in the entire city. Because why? No guns. Right. People will get. I'm not you stabbing. Get stabbed up bad. You get stabbed and beat up. But guns kill people. People yeah. don't kill people. Guns kill people. Yeah, guns make what, what, it a lot what is easier. It? What, what do you always say? Guns don't kill people. What do you say? You're always fucking on your Facebook people. rants. <laughs> guns don't kill people. People kill people. Yeah. With guns. With guns. Yeah. It's like the double standard. It's like, you know, if guns don't kill people, people kill people. Well, then if guns guns don't, well, then by that logic, guns don't save people. People save people. Yeah. You know, it's like you ever notice the gun always gets credit for saving you, but it, right. never, it never gets the blame for killing you. It's uh, like, it's a little bit of both. I mean, people are fuck. This is all, people I play mean, games with dude, that shit. I mean, and it's like crazy, like, even when we talk about, like, you know, history, it's just fucking wild, like, how, could you imagine, like, ha tr hating someone because of the pigment of their skin? How fucking ignorant yeah. you have to be? It happens I get now. That, I, I know, yeah. but I'm saying, like, I get, I get how there's, like, people say, oh, there's differences, socioeconomic differences, all that. Yeah, but the bottom line is you're not liking them because of the color of their skin. It's fucking wild. Blacks versus white, white versus black, Asian. Yeah. It's like, that's fucking wild. I feel like an advanced race would look at us and be like, "What? how fucking dumb yeah. is this race of people yeah. that they don't, they're not liking each other and they're killing each other because of shades of skin color. It's fucking Isn't wild. it fucking nuts when it's, you think about it, when you break it down? Because that's what it is. It's deeply embedded in our brain. We're tribal. Just a lot of animals are like that too, territorial. Yeah. And we got to get rid of that. We yeah, got to shut that. Yeah, not tribal. Hyenas. Hyenas. No, they just wild. We fucking just go around and we fucking put our pseudo dicks in, in lion kills. <laughs> I mean, that's what we do. Hyenas don't discriminate. They're just fucking wild. Google hyena births. Yeah. And it's probably, you won't be able to eat for a about a week. The female yeah. hyenas have pseudo penises, is what they're called, yeah. which is basically like a long, tiny. It looks like a penis, and they give birth out of that thing. Yeah. And a lot of the hyenas die because they're basically trying to squeeze a baby newborn hyena through something the size of a clit. Yeah. And it fucking rips it. These things are savages. 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 Um. Okay. So speaking of more savages, we have the forty. But that was a good point, though. I want. I just want to harp what? on that point for a second. Is that. It wasn't as dangerous a place as the rumors yes. and the lore. Yes. It was actually, like, that's the thing. It was a dirty place, mm -hmm. okay? There weren't a lot of, what was it, like, fucking two toilets per tenement? Yeah, it was disgusting. Fires happened there. Yeah. It was a fire trap. You got yeah. killed. It was a densely populated area. Yes. They even say it was, like, more dense than Bombay or something. At, at the that time. time, yeah. I mean, it was packed with people, new, new immigrants constantly coming in. These were new groups of people coming into contact for each other for the first time. But for the most part... It was pretty peaceful. They were yes. poor. They were hardworking people. Yeah, there were gangs. Yeah, there was violence. All that stuff. All that stuff did happen. But for the most part, it was just a poor neighborhood, and it fucking stank because there was a lake there, and that's where the butchers dumped all their goddamn well, yeah, there body was a, parts there was a from the from the cows and shit. It was a yeah. It was called the Collect Pond, and Collect Pond is actually like a pond in the middle of downtown Manhattan, which is just it's there's courthouse over it right now. You would never even know there was a pond there, and that's where. Uh, you know, at some point it was the it was the fresh water source uh, for the city of New York in the 1600s and 1700s. Um, but then it started to you know dry up and people started to pollute it. They would you know the butchers would throw meat in there. People would piss and shit in there. Uh, in the summertime, um, it would be you know mosquitoes and everything, and it would stink to high heavens because they would never clean the water. So that's where the poor people would live. Um, the it, it's crazy to think about that they lived like when you look at what the Five Points used to be yeah. and where the collect was. Like, people lived right, imagine living right next door to, like, a body of water that was just full of, like, rotting, Ugh. like, pig parts and, like, yeah. cow parts and, like, whatever. Shit and piss. Shit and piss. I mean, it fucking reeked bad. Bad. In the summertime. Bad. How bad it would get. You would not want to wear your Jordans around there. <laughs> no. You wouldn't be wearing your Jordans on Colac Pond. No. Um, so, and that's, you know, where, and then the, the really wealthy people start to move up northern, uh, you know, to the north part of the city, uh, to the, pretty much the upper east side and the upper west side. That's where you had a lot of the wealth. And then downtown by Colac Pond was all row houses and tenements and it was disgusting down there. And then they started to build on Colac Pond, but realized it was just a swamp because the drainage was horrible. So it just became like a part of town that was just disgusting and nobody wanted to go near it. Um, but this was, this stench was filling up the five points at the time. And what's um, so wild is that City Hall was really close to the five yeah. points. City Hall, where Boss Tweed would do all see, like that's 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 another beautiful part about five points what Giannis mentioned is, you know, all this corruption and filth and uh, you know, uh disgusting 
behavior was happening all within feet of City Hall, which is supposed to be the pillar of excellency for a city and, you know, the f uh, beacon of freedom and hope and all that stuff. So it was a really corrupt, crazy uh time and it was so corrupt and so crazy it was kind of like it was kind of like um like a human zoo they would actually do tours people would act charles dickens went went on the act you know the, the the famous author charles dickens would go on these tours and horace greeley and other famous uh american um thinkers and philosophers and all that at that time philanthropists they would go on this tour and they would have a the, the their tour guide would be a police officer who like was known in the five points at the time and they show this actually also in the gangs in new york they would go and just walk through the neighborhood and just look at the people yeah that's what they would do and they would put scarves up to their nose and just watch the people and the people would like perform like not, they would just do what they normally do, robbing people, beating the shit out of each other, public drunkenness, lewd behavior, prostitutes. People would come and just walk through and they would pay money for a tour. Could you imagine touring a fucking neighborhood like that? Yeah. Yo, we, we should do Bay Ridge tours. We should. Yeah. We should. Seriously. We should. That's what you're going to get also on Patreon.com for a, a fucking $200. You, yo, we'll give you we a should private do tour. that. Up. If you go up to, we're going to pick a $200 option. Yo. We're going to give you a tour. And just to piggyback, like, yeah, the, the lore of the five points didn't start after the five points. The lore of the five points, the myth of the five points, actually existed at the time of the five points. So, you know, to middle class people and upper class people, you know, it started to be known as this like crazy place, which actually was not that crazy. But these people were middle class and upper class. They didn't know how poor people lived, you know, like immigrants lived. So they went there. They, they were so curious that they took these tours with police escorts and they went down there and they saw it for themselves. And like you said, Charles Dickens was one of those guys. Yeah. So... So we had, I I just like I like I like tying all the, all this in with the gangs because I fucking the gang the, to me the gang I can't I, believe you were a gang member because you're was a fucking criminal. Well, well you're I, a bad. I, I want to go through some some more of the gangs and I want to I want you I want to find out which gang me you White Wasp and Zachy Ice's face would be in. I want to see. Okay, but I want to ask White Wasp a question real quick. Go ahead. You knew it, right? You knew this dirty fucking Irish kid at some point. They can't help themselves, can they? Yeah. These Catholics. Can't they can't the way he's looking at you? You can't you can't help yourself. It's yeah. in your jeans. Look, you, you do crime. Sitting with his legs crossed like that, yeah. he would have he would have definitely taken a tour. Yeah, I mean, he would have walked through and be like, ah. He would have thrown up. He would have said to his wife, "That was preposterous." Yeah, I mean, like, this is so gross. Yeah, I feel like fucking Bardo and most wasps are born through a pseudo penis. <laughs> 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 Do you feel like that? Yeah. That's how they give birth. Yo, the wasps were really scared of Catholics back then because they thought the Catholics were more uh, loyal to the Pope. And there was this fear that, like, Catholics would come in here and they were going to try to, like, take over. Yeah. Like, and, they, you know, they were more loyal to the Pope than they were uh, the American Constitution. It's you know? crazy. So those guys were, like, the first, get out of my country. And the Irish were the first, like, fuck you. They hated the Catholics, and they huh. wanted to convert them. They tried to convert them constantly. Can't convert the Catholics, cause you remember when you went in to get a meal? Like a lot of those Protestant missions down there, a lot of the people doing charity work who were Protestants, those women. If you wanted a meal, you'd have to convert to Protestantism before you got the meal. That's how fucking scared of the Catholics they were. Fucking wild. All right, so another gang, the Dead Rabbits, which is uh, you know we're talking about Liam Neeson. This was the head of that gang in the movie Gangs of New York. This was these were Irish, more Irish immigrants. So you had the Forty Thieves and the Dead Rabbits. These are the Irishmen. Um, Bowery Boys, is dope names by the way, Native Americans. Yeah, dope fuck, names. Dead Rabbits. Dead Rabbits is dope. Pug Ugly's dope. Dope. Um, Forty Thieves, dope. So the, there's Dead Rabbits. These were uh, this was kind of one of the most feared gangs, along with the Bowery Boys. I think that's why Scorsese you know focused on them because that's historically true. They was these were like the badasses, and. Uh, they were, you know, big time five points gang. Um, they, uh, they, eighteen fifties was their was their heyday, and they were excelled at robbery, pickpocketing, brawling, and particularly with their sworn enemies, the Bowery Boys. So these guys used to love to pick fights with the fucking Bowery Boys. I mean, that's what I would have been alive, love to have seen, just fights between these gangs. Because I feel like nowadays, you know, you get into a fight with a gang, you're gonna get shot and killed. It's what it is. But Dan, it'd be nice to take a good beating. Yeah. Some of these guys took good fucking beatings. Some of them were actually bare knuckle fighters, as you'll find out as if you keep listening. Keep listening. Yeah, so one person uh, who was who was famous for, at the Dead Rabbits, and she was also portrayed in the movie, and I thought she was cool, she was called Hellcat Maggie. Oh, and she's the bestest broad. She's fucking the best. She filed her teeth to points filed her teeth to points that she wore brass fingernails into battle, which is fucking wild. She's she was cutting people's faces yeah, out. Yeah, you would have banged that out, though, no? I would have banged her out. You fumes? You think she had fumes? 100%, right? I... <laughs> 
<laughs> could you get through the five points? Could you get through? Could you get through five a five points girl without smelling some fumes? I mean, it's impossible, uh, right? It's gonna be some fumes, yeah. Yeah, but you, what are you gonna do, right? What are you gonna do? I mean, Collect Pond had fumes. Yeah, the the whole place, everyone had fumes back then, yeah. guys and girls alike. So another thing, Dead Rabbits were big for is the events of July fourth, eighteen fifty seven, when one of the street fights with the Bowery Boys turned into a bloody riot that killed a dozen people. And actually, in the movie, the gangs in New York. They uh, depict a riot, the uh, the Civil War riot, uh, the 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 draft riots of the Civil War in 1863, and they uh, you know we from our research and from what BigOnion.com told us is they, uh, they I don't think they don't think that 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 riot from like breaking down the riot that uh, was in the gangs in New York that probably wasn't the Civil War draft riot that was more likely this riot this 1857 riot between the Bowery Boys and the Dead Rabbits because. Uh, it just historically, it just seemed like it made sense. They barricaded the dead rabbits. Actually, barricaded off streets and pretty much trapped the Bowery Boys. And it was just a, a riots that lasted for like four days, and uh, at least twelve people were killed. And uh, uh, it, it was fucking bad. And then the dead rabbits supposedly uh, they began an offshoot of another gang called the Roach Guards. Fucking Roach Guard isn't Roach Guard like a, a Roach deterrent thing right now? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Was, well, what Roach Guard. Roach Guard. Does... Th yeah, that's a you, that's a spray. I think the Roach or Guard sounds like it should be one. Yeah. It was, they were probably named after roaches, but that's a yeah. Yeah, that's not a good name. No. Doesn't it? Say, that didn't isn't isn't uh there's some evidence that maybe that's what the Bowery Boys called them. Like it was like a pejorative name, like Roach Boy. Like yeah, Roach and, the, and the newspapers just called them that Roach Guards and that. Oh no, I think that their actual name was the Roach Guards and the Dead Rabbits was the pejorative. Oh, you're I right. Think. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. That is yeah. It. One yeah. popular theory argues that the term "dead rabbit" was simply a pejorative used by the Bowery Boys and the New York Press in reference to members of the Roach Guards and the Five Points yeah. Gang. Yeah, yeah. Um, this next gang is the Daybreak Boys. These guys sound fucking cool. <laughs> um, this was uh, this extended into the waters of the East River. So you had some fucking actual pirates, yeah, like legit pirates working the seas. Yeah. In uh in the five points, which was dope, and, and these guys got their name because that's when they fucking did their crime. Yeah, it's daybreak, and these they were called the. Which makes it hard for me to believe there was no Italians around. Why Italians are usually the one that nickname people based on the worst thing that they do. Yeah, it's like you know if a guy's if one guy's got a lazy eye, there goes hey hey there goes pirate over there goes captain to the Caribbean. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. Or if a guy doesn't leave his house till after four, he's like hey there's Jimmy the mole. You know. <laughs> so if they called him the Daybreak Boys, you would figure Italian would have named them the Daybreak Boys. Like yeah, these fucking guys. This is when they do their crime. Yeah. The Daybreak the Daybreak Boys. They, I don't know. I don't but know. no fucking Italians. No Italian, which fucking sucked. I mean, uh, you think they were just eating p potatoes? What did they eat? Potatoes and mutton? Your people stink, Bardo. Your food and cuisine is horrific. Yeah. Ice is fucking... Middle Eastern food, good. Hummus. Greek food, good. Your people, the Irish? Number one. Fucking gross. The other half of your genes, gross. Italians, probably barf. Every time they realize that you're mixed with the Irish uh, cuisine, like yeah. your people ate fucking potatoes, cuz. That's all you got is potatoes. My father's my father's mother, when he came home, was like, ah, oh, marry an Irish girl. She was probably like, why? Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah. Why? What is she going to eat? Feed you? I mean, gross. Gross. What is she going to make? Are you? And wasps even worse. Like, what do they do? Scones? Ugh. You do you scones and tea and fucking teas. When you you've been to Britain, right? Their yeah. whole cuisine is basically Indian cuisine, which is good, you know. Yeah, but, but without the flavor, I like Indian food. I mean, no, you're... I'm saying the British, the British is Indian cuisine with no flavor. Yeah, this Indian food has flavor. But they had to like borrow another cuisine because they just have it's like to fill a void. Like fucking wasp people. Yeah, eat, I don't know what you guys eat. Egg? Eggs, boiled eggs. And it's like, and it's like toast, toast. Yeah, fucking marmalade, gross, gross. And it's like you, uh, Britain almost ruled the entire fucking world. On How do toast. you not pick up one piece of food? Exactly. Um. So, uh, Daybreak Boys. These guys were river pirates, 1840s, 50s, 60s, and uh, they had colorful. Co the, their leaders had colorful, mo co colorful monikers such as cow legged Sam McCarthy. Think that's because he had a big dick. <laughs> cow legged. <laughs> Told you, sounds like these guys were named by Italians. And Slobbery Jim, because he was talking to His name was Slobbery Jim? Slobbery Jim. Don't, does it sound like Italians named these yeah. guys? Like this guy fucking, he, he spits a lot. He's yeah. fucking Slobbery Jim down there. These guys would use small rowboats, and they were, a lot of them were juvenile gangsters. And they would silently roll their way alongside anchored shipping vessels, sneak it aboard. They'd steal as much cargo as they could before returning to their dinghies and escaping to a rendezvous point to a gin mill in the Fourth Ward. Yeah. So the Fourth Ward, I think, was more like... um. The fourth ward was like, uh, like you know, five points is pretty much like 
uh, Little Italy, Chinatown area. The fourth ward was like the neighborhood over. So that would be like Houston Street and stuff. That was the fourth ward. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. And uh, Daybreak Boys used to kill a lot of people. And um, they would slit the watchmen's throats. That's usually what they would do. That's how you knew it was a, a, a Daybreak They boy. were pretty brutal, these guys. Yeah. yeah. Then the last one I want to talk about before we talk about the big guys, the Five Points Gang, is the uh, the Wyos. Wyo! They uh they were formed from the rev the, the remnants of the several defunct five point outfits. So a lot of five point gangs would just stop being gangs because the Irish would move out, or the blacks would move out, or the Native Americans would move out. So like there would be like little bullshit, you know, splinter gangs, and this was one of them. Uh, they started out as a loose collection of petty thugs, pickpockets, and murderers. But by the 1880s, they graduated to more high class crime like counterfeiting, prostitution, and racketeering. This sounds like mafia shit. Yeah, you know we're getting close now. We're getting close. You know we're getting close. To the Italians coming. We start hearing racketeering, counterfeiting, and prostitutes. Yeah, but yo, the or I- as pro- Italians call them toots. Yeah, <laughs> toots. <laughs> I have a, my, my boy. I have a friend who's like real Italian kid. He goes, yeah, I got a fucking toot last night. <laughs> I'm like, what you fart? He goes, nah, hookers. <laughs> <laughs> the um. A lot of the blacks in the Five Points, they they that's when the blacks started moving to Harlem actually because they yes. wanted to escape the Irish. I mean, let's be honest. I'm, again, I gotta just be. We gotta be honest. Keep about it one hundred. Black, blacks had it the worst, dude. Absolutely. Fucking Irish discriminate against them, and even the the riots of '63 it was the fucking Irish that didn't want to go to the war, and they ended up taking it out on the blacks, and they they ended up yeah. ha- hanging a few blacks. Yeah, innocent dudes. Because because the mindset you gotta understand the mind. See, because it's 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 you know today it's like obvious. It's like yeah, this is fucking all absurd, and it's about pigmentation, and it's it's just stupid, and like kind of like uh, a, it seems like a like a fucking this pr- primal you know mutant of a human. I, it's just tribal, tribal. tribal. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 we're not as developed. They weren't as developed as we are now. And they haven't mm. you know lived as much life. So whatever. But um, back then, you know, the nobody wanted to go. Nobody wanted to go fight in the Civil War. The North, New York, actually. They were the Union. I mean, it's a northern state, but they didn't care about. They wanted slavery. They wanted. They didn't want. They did not want to fight what they were calling the Black Man's War, and they were. And the and the Native Americans were worried that the if you freed the black slaves, then that what that was going to do is make the Irish take the slave jobs, and then the the, the Native Americans would have no jobs. So they they felt like you just get the Irish out. Fucking keep the slaves enslaved, and the the economy will keep working for us, the white man. Uh, but you know, of course, as we know now, that's not the way it is. I mean, could you imagine fucking what like Bill the Butcher and these guys and like the Dead Rabbits and the well, mainly the Bowery Boys, like what they would think of New York now? They would probably hate it. Yeah. Even though it's so much better, they would be like, no, they I would think not. They accept- might like it though. You think they would? Yeah, I don't think anyone loves. Yeah. They. I look. These were poor people trying to fight to survive. So they were. You know, they resorted to tribal ways to kind of protect themselves. Police was corrupt. Right. You know, it's like these are people in a strange land. So they they clung to their to their their own right for protection. You know. Well, you know, and you know what's good about the Bowery Boys and most of these gangs, if you put them in, if you put them, uh, if you just press the button and put them into the world today especially some of these fucking williamsburg areas they would they would you they would just look like hipsters they would look exactly you would bill the butcher could walk around brooklyn right now and nobody would bat an eye they'd be like this i'm telling you if you play that game hipster or history you can't tell which is you which you can never tell which is kind of cool but it just really makes you want to punch a fucking hipster <laughs> for some reason it just makes me want to uppercut them yeah. but it's kind of cool and i think i want to uppercut them because i'm not as cool as them yeah well the truth is a lot of them are just a little dirty yeah, and right. When you look at history figures, yeah. they were a little dirty. It's like, yeah. you know, come on, cuz. I got chlamydia Clean twice. Up. I got chlamydia twice. Both times it was from hipster broads. It was, yeah. yeah 100%. You got chlamydia twice, but you know what? Yeah. You don't look like a guy that has clear. You know, you, nah. you're trimmed up. You yeah. trimmed up. You're gelled up. You're trimmed up. You look clean. Yeah, I look clean, but you know, yep. sometimes you got a dirty dick. <laughs> um, so, what this, about the pug uglies, though? You didn't even. Did I you... didn't talk about the pug uglies. Yeah. I mean, they were, basically, the pug uglies were just Irish. Fucking, they were the firefighters. They, the pug uglies were the original firefighters, and they were just. I mean, just think about like if you could press. Just think about like a if a if a fucking if a bulldog fucked an Irish scone and put on a leprechaun outfit. That's what a pug ugly looked like. Yeah. They were just ugly. You know, they're to call the pug. I mean, they look like that's my favorite name. Pug, pug uglies. uglies. Yeah, yeah, they uh, was it? You think it was? Did they have pug dogs back then? Where did sure. they get that name? I don't know. Yeah, or is you're the, the nature or is boy, the, or is the dog, or is the you know is the dog named after those guys? True. You know? I mean, I don't know. Could you imagine you're so we weird don't know that. that you look like a pug? Yeah. That's a fucking weird. Yeah, mashed in nose. Yeah. Yeah. So the last gang I want to talk about, the Five Points Gang. Now, this gang, 
This is like this is later now. This is later. Now we're talking 1890s, but it's, you know, it just it just gets it near, come. gets near and dear to my heart. This well, gang. these are both because you're 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 a lot Irish too, cuz yeah. you are Irish and Italian. You, I want to. We should on this podcast as we go on. We need to do ancestry.com again yeah. Yeah. and find out if or or me and you should research your records. Yeah. to find maybe your ancestors were fucking were in the five points. They might have been in the five because that would be wild. It would be wild. Direct descendant from the points. There's a good chance. Of yeah, because nobody, my family that lives in the Bronx, none of them have teeth. <laughs> nobody have teeth. No, I mean it's like crazy. Like they, they have like they have a few teeth between six or seven people. And nobody, my dad has no teeth. He has, <laughs> my dad has zero teeth. I mean he has dentures, but he has he has had no teeth for a long time. And your family can't trace the origins, right? Everyone no. just kind of know. Like we've been here for a while. And my father grew up in the Bronx, but went to high school in the Lower East Side, Seward Park High School, which is very close to the Five Points. Yeah. So I don't know. But he was from the Bronx, though. Born in actually Harlem. Harlem. Yeah. That's interesting. But yeah. yo, you're, yeah, from your DNA, it looks like you're like Irish and Italian. So there's a good chance you're a five points guy. Could be five points dirtbag. Yeah. All right. So this last gang, the five points gang, legendary mob came together in the 1890s when the fucking finally, the Italian gangster. Now the Italians are coming here. Italian gangster. It's telling me that's bella. Sad. The Italian gangster's name was Paul Kelly. That's not an Italian last name, but his real last name was like Vigiano or something. But he made it Kelly just to sound more Irish. Because back in the day, you want to be a fucking gangbanger? In the 1890s, before the Italians came, you had to sound more Irish. Mm -hmm. So Paul Kelly, and uh, he united the remaining members of the Dead Rabbits, the Wyus, and the other Five Points gangs under his own banner. From his headquarters in the New Brighton Dance Hall, Kelly marshaled an army of 1,500 thugs in bloody turf wars with the arch with his arch rivals, the Jews. The Jews, the, the Eastman. The, Eastman, right? Yes, the Eat the well, Jews gang run by the former hood, Mark Eastman. Mark Eastman. They, yeah. they were a little more nervous, no, ISIS they were ISIS face is jerking off, and I was like, fuck the Jews, yeah. fuck the Jews, <laughs> kill the Jews, death to the Jews. Yo, fucking ISIS face just popped up. Yeah. He was starting yeah, he to nod off. Yeah, he gets, yeah he's, he's hard a as a big rock. fan of the Five Points gang. Don't come on me, Zach. Um, <laughs> the two groups then engaged in constant brawls and once even squared off in a massive gun battle under the 2nd Avenue L train. Yeah, because now well, we're getting into later where the guns yeah, are there. There's not even a 2nd Avenue elevated train line anymore. Yeah. When they weren't participating in Wild West style shootouts, the Five Pointers ran widespread robbery, racketeering, and toot rings. They also dabbled in legitimate front businesses and worked as strong arm men for the corrupt Tammany Hall political machine. The gang's influence eventually waned in the 1910s, but not before they helped train the next generation of mob bosses. Among others, the Five Points initiated thugs, maybe you heard of these guys, Al Capone, Lucky Luciano, and Johnny Torrio into a life of organized crime. See, when the Italians come, everything gets a little better, a little safer. A little or <laughs> <laughs> they definitely organize. Yeah, they're good at yeah. it, man. So it's crazy. Lucky Luciano and Al Capone last, you know, they kind of are directly connected to the Five Points gangs. Yeah, I mean, like I told you, I mean, Five Points is really the birth of the modern urban America. You Absolutely. Do uh, you know what you never hear about in history, though? I, the, I guess the... The African Americans who were living in the Five Points, they didn't have a gang. I guess they were just they were just blacks, you know. They they, were just everyone blacks, yeah. just knew, and they were like, "Yo, we got to get the fuck out of here." And they left to Harlem because these Irish dudes are crazy. Yeah, these wasps are crazy. We got to bounce. So they went to Harlem, dude. They tried to get out of there. Yeah, I mean, old school New York. You know, if you ever have time, you know, if you're in the New York area, go. I mean, you know, go. Of course, go see the Freedom Tower. Go see Times Square. Go see all the touristy shit. But really, just for me, just walking around, you would never even know. You could drive past. It's called Columbus Park, which is where the Paradise Square was, where the intersection of the five points actually was, where the uh, uh, you know actual direct location was, and you would never even know. It's right now. It's just you know it's it's a it's 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 a Chinese neighborhood. There's you know Chinese people doing Tai Chi in the park, and you would never know that like this used to be you know where as Yana said, where like modern America as we know it today started. Yeah. We're born out of the fucking slum, mud, and shit and piss. Of the five points. Lower Manhattan was really the city of yes. New Amsterdam, and then New York was all concentrated down in Lower Manhattan. You know, the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. all that shit was happening in walking distance from what became the five points. And when the immigrants came, that's the five points is where everything spread from. People, the Irish, and then the Italians, and then the Chinese. Yep. Uh, uh, they all came and lived in the five points and then made their money, made the, established their trade, and got out. And everyone spread out. And that's really the beginning of city life with immigrants 
and all these people. And the Italians came, and yeah, they, they fucking brought the good food. Maybe everyone chilled out when they were able to get lasagna. Can you imagine being... I mean, I know I'm talking about food a lot, but it's yeah. got, nobody ever talks about the role that that must play. Of course. How angry a dude are you going to be when you're eating a, a boiled potato with, <sighs> with salt on it? I'm going to join a gang. I want to And it smells like shit everywhere. It smells like shit everywhere, and you're eating a fucking boiled potato. Yeah. That's what you're eating. Or a piece of meatloaf. Are you kidding? And then these Italians come, and they're like, boom. Look at what we're doing with the tomato. We just made you, my grandmother just fucking made you homemade lasagna. And you're sitting there going, what the fuck's lasagna? Yeah. Hey, come over. Come here, Chris. There's fucking... Put it in your face, you fucking roach. This guy Vinny's just talking. This is your new food cut. Can you imagine the first time an Irish guy tasted lasagna? Oh, my God. He w then he was like, you know what? He went, he melted. He went from a tough fucking Irish guy to like fucking, I just got to chill out, dude. Yeah. And that's why the Italians were so able to unify all when they came the wave of italian immigrants came and yeah. they organized the remnants of those gangs they were able to do it so easily with the fucking food times good people they gave them all lasagna and those fucking irish they couldn't believe what they were tasting cuz yo times were good kids it's not in the history books but you heard it here irish kids my good theory. kids blacks good kids chinese good kids new york's a bunch of good kids okay good kids new york city i mean you know like i said go walk around Check it out. We got some videos up on our Patreon page um, of because because you know what's interesting to me is like these historical places that we mentioned. There's like you know and you know don't forget the 1850s and 60s. You know that wasn't that long ago. There no. was pictures of it like that. So it's like we know like the Bowery Boys hung out at 40 Baxter uh, 40 Bowery Street. Like we that's just we know that. And it's like now it's like you know you go to these places and it's just a fucking T-Mobile store. And yeah. it's like you would never know like the millennial kid playing fucking Angry Birds on his phone has no idea that Bill the Butcher. Used to shit there yeah there's no idea yeah. and he you know he probably wrote a sweeping freaking epithet about how racist gangs in new york was and how he's like ah, it just offends me and it's like you're working under his ghost and ghosts are real and it's gonna fucking haunt you millennial piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> well you go down there now it's interesting because you get little italy's still there yeah there's a remnant well a, like like a block now yeah it's like a block yeah uh, it's sad the Italians, chinese spread out yeah chinese and the italians out. left but the Chinese stayed when that wave of Chinese immigrants came. And a lot of them, listen to this, which is very interesting. Oh, yes, the, this part. The Chinese came later. So basically, the Irish came first mm -hmm. to the five points. Mm -hmm. The the freed blacks uh, were there in the five points. The, uh, the, you know, the wasps, the Bowery boys, they were there. You know, lower class wasps. But they had trades and stuff, but they weren't rich, were there. And then... The Italians came and the Chinese came. Yes. And the Irish left, the Chinese stayed, and the Italians stayed. And then the Italians have left, a lot of them have left, there's still a little bit, and the Chinese just fucking stayed. They just stayed. It became but, Chinatown. But tell them, I thought you were going to tell them about the Irish and the Chinese. Tell so, them about that. When the Chinese, this is wild to me. When the Chinese and Irish came, a lot of the Irish would send, um, the families in Ireland would send um, just single women there because yeah. it was such a great place for women to work. And then you would send the money back to Ireland. Send the money back to Ireland. So a lot of those, uh, even the first department store, which was down across from Woolworth Building. What was it called again? Stewart's. That Stewart's. Was the first department store. And he employed all Irish women workers yeah. in his uh, factory up yeah, there. Yeah, it's right on Broadway and Chamber Street, right at that intersection. It's now a Modell's. It's a Modell's. Swear to God. But that's the, Swear to God. That's the original building. The original yeah. Stewart's. The guy became a fucking millionaire back yep. then. And uh, he used on the backs of... Uh, female Irish um, workers in his factory. They were sewing and shit. So the women would come single from Ireland, single yeah. women, young women, and the Chinese would send dudes, strictly dudes alone, yeah. because there was work for dudes. So they wouldn't come as family, and they would they were living together in the five points. Yep. The single Irish women and the, the Chinese dudes. And guess what happened? Yep, guess what happens? What do you get when you mix a fucking a little baby fucking wonton dick with a potato puss? You get... You get biracial babies. You get cause. biracial Chinese and Irish babies, and that was or bicultural. A, bicultural, and actually one happened of the, a lot. One of the only, one of the only uh, Chinese Roman Catholic churches is right on um, Mott and Pell Street, right where Mulberry Bend was, right in the uh, pretty much heart of Five Points. Um, they're still to this day 
a Roman Catholic uh, Chinese congregation because of you know Irish being Catholic and you know the uh, you know Chinese normally aren't Catholic Chinese are uh, Presbyterian. Uh, they are Buddhists. Usually. Oh, Buddhists, yeah. yeah and um, so you had a lot of uh, Chinese men, uh, you know, mixed with Irish women, and I'm sure, I'm sure it was frowned upon at the time. I would imagine, right? Probably, um, but but it, but it happened a lot. It happened a lot. So there's in the a, five points, a lot of half, you know, half Chinese, half Irish uh, people that probably still. I bet you, if we walked around long enough, we would still, uh, you know, talk to the to the people in Chinatown. They would, you would meet some Chinese. Irish people's descendants of that. I mean, Absolutely. you have to, right? Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of them intermingled and intermarried, and um, they a lot of them, the Chinese had to convert to Roman Catholicism because you know how the Irish are. They're fucking devout. yeah. Like, oh, this mom won't even listen to this podcast. That's how devout she is. That's how devout she is. And cousin. the Chinese don't give a fuck. They're like, yo, we're Buddhist, cousin. We're Taoist yeah. or whatever. We're like, whatever. We're spiritual. And then these Irish girls are like, no. We have to go in the church and get married proper for Jesus. And he's Just, like, I'm getting, I'm getting that red, red puss. I'm that's good. It. I'll do I it. Love, I love, uh, I like, I want, I want to, I want to do, a, I want to do a whole podcast about uh, Chinese New York because it's fucking wild. I mean, and you know, I love walking through. You know, five points is it's like I said, it's mostly Chinese now, and like I don't know what the I don't know what the words are on you know the awnings and stuff, and you know most people are speaking in Chinese, but it just looks like a fun place. It, it does looks like a dope place. They're always doing Tai Chi. Yeah, they're they're healthy as fuck. They are healthy as fuck. There's hell. They're they're the most. I mean, it's like the Olympic. When you go into these parks, it's like they're Olympic athletes and yeah. they're seventy five year old dudes. Yeah, but I mean, there's there's a smell down there still because they got all that f street fish out there. And don't like, smell great. Yeah, don't smell great. <laughs> trying to tell those. Don't smoke great. Right. But you know what's cool about it is it kind of takes you back in time because that's probably what New York used to smell like. Must it, It's just a hint. It's not even close to how bad it used to be. Yo, I hope you guys enjoyed fucking this, this episode. And guess what we're going to do now? Want to read some Patreon names? Listen, this that's is the exciting part. Yeah. First of all, thank you for your service. We're up to, what, 98. We just started. 98. We just started. A couple days ago, we launched our Patreon page, which is a Patreon list is a legit website. It's the best website to come along for independent dudes like me and Chris who are making stuff. You guys support us directly. You allow us to continue to make this content. You help us pay production costs. It's because of you, and we want to thank you. So we're going to thank each and every one of you fucking individually. Individually, okay. So, all right, I'll start out then. First of all, we got to fucking. First of all, we got to start off with the hundos, the hundred dollar rewards. We got. I'm gonna get this right, even though I know it's a Greek name. Go, I'm gonna let you go for Seriously, it. Seriously, let let me. Let, do you know this name? Let go me see if it. I can get yeah. this. Dimitros. Uh, am I right on yeah, that? Yeah. Dimitros. Dimitrios. Dimitrios. Vertioris. Beautiful. Nice. Nailed it. I mean, you did it like an Italian too. He, he's a hundo, and then Bobby Ziadi. Bobby Ziotti. Bobby Ziotti is a hundo. But he's not Italian, Bobby Ziotti. No? No, I think he's Middle Eastern. Okay. Bobby Ziotti. Bobby, oh, fucking Zach Ice's face just he gave a little fist bump. Yeah, how would we pronounce Ziotti? Yeah. Sounds Italian, but is, it's not. How do you say that? Ziotti? Ziotti. 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 Yo. Bobby Ziotti. Is this guy funneling his money? Is this is this a real hundo or is this a fucking front because he's no, following he's, prices? Uh, he owns uh, Townhouse 275. Oh, Townhouse 275. Bobby and, Zia. And Dimitri owns um, uh, Nature's Grill. So Great. shout two, out. Yeah. Shout out to Bay Ridge uh, Buttes. Buttes. And they um, they support us. And you can see their logo on the back of Chris Mullen and the crew of 82 uh, Bay Ridge Boys episode four. You want to read these 25s and then I'll read the fives? Yeah. Uh, Dino. Dot. Sikas, mm -hmm. Susie, Dok, I think. Uh, is she Greek or is that is she Scandinavian? Dok, D O A K. Uh oh, she's Scandinavian. Giannis is going to look at her Facebook. Woo! Sal Cacciano. Oh, yeah. I'll Come let you, on. I'll let you read that. Sal Cacciano. There it is. Thank you, Sal Cacciano. Sonia Gonzalez Martinez. That's my girl. That's it. I know her. She's great. Um, She works with Angelo. There. Yeah. There. Thank you for donating. Damn, she gave us 25. Sonia, thank you. I know Sonya. That's so nice. Uh, she does a great web series uh, with Angelo and Tammy uh, called Get Some. Daniel Venturini. Yeah. Oh, the Italians are coming for you, cuz. Hell yeah. Anthony DiStefano. That's my pops. Is that your pops? That's my pops. <laughs> yeah, this guy gave $25 a month. Pops, you owe me $25. <laughs> Guess I'm paying myself. 
<laughs> All right, then we got uh, Mark Gessner. Oh, shout out Mark Gessner. Hey, Benders, check out Mark. Mark Gessner is the voice of uh, Red Lobster commercials. Anytime you hear a Red Lobster commercial, it's Mark Gessner's voice. Thank you, Mark. And then we got Michael Hyland. Thank you, guys. You're our $25 crew. I think those were the hyenas or are those fucking wild boys? Those are, those are the, uh, what do we call it? Let's call the 25 the pseudo penises. Pseudo penises. Those are the pseudo penises, the PPs. Okay, now the five dollar rewards. We got a bunch. We got Jenny Russo. Thank you, my friend Jenny Russo from high school. Wow, these the first yeah. round are going to be personal people. <laughs> RC, just fucking RC Cola, and then oh my god, we got one. Of, if I could get this name right, I can't even get. If it. I could get this name right, Holy I'm gonna I'm massage my balls on Facebook Live. Demo, Custo Giannopoulos. Custo Giannopoulos. That's yeah. Giannopoulos. Giannopoulos. That's a, that's a Greek name right there. Uh oh, Zach Isis, we got a Jew coming up. Levi Uribe. You all right? Okay. <laughs> Ryan. Z this guy's just name is just Ryan. Zyra Zales. Pete Illich. Alejandrina Shabazz. Ryan, they got two Ryans. Just yeah, <laughs> Tiana Hairston. Thank you, Tiana. You you show me uh, show us a lot of love on Instagram. Thank you, David Lewison. Thank you, Big Dave, St. Joe's alum. Dennis Price, Rena Lawrence, Jeff Venicia, who's making all the Facebook art. One of the guys who's making. Don't all... stop doing that. It's yeah, hilarious. don't stop, Jeff. Thank you so much. You you and this guy Andrew uh, Argos. Yeah, thank but, you but for Jeff your service. Venicia, thank you. Yo, you're making the Facebook art. You're making is fantastic. Brian Trowell, Brent Rolick. Gregory S. Yanalfalo, <laughs> David Hines Ketchup, <laughs> Jessica Holzinger, Chris, no last name, Antonio Reed, Dan DeChamps, Mark from Mass, Graham, Donald, Jessica Tortez, Quit Being Stupid, <laughs> Bu Crunk, Chris, Jocelyn Noyes, Rob Oki, Jacob Kubrak. Thank you, Jacob. Joe Larson, Joe comedian. Joe Larson, comedian, who's fucking jacked out, good personal trainer, cute. And funny. Nikos Maridakis. You're killing it. Joseph Sanchez, Vincent Ray Romano, Joseph Sil Siciliano, Ernie. <laughs> I like Ernie. Frank Gallo, Frank A. Frank A, my old boy Frankie Gallo. Jace, thank you, Jace. Eric Basinger, no relation to Kim. Marco Krivokopic. One of my closest boys right there. Yes. Thank Sam you, Marco. Samuel Peck. Joe Galino, who's fucking sounds like, you know, fucking five street boy. That's a fucking, yeah. That's, that's a, a five, five pointer, pointer right yeah. there. In the, in the uh, early uh, early 20th century. Matt McKay. Uh-oh. Here come the Pog Uglies. Fuck you. Matt McKay, Brian O'Callaghan, Reagan Harshambolt. Oh, Mr. Panos. What the fuck is that? I guess. Mr. Panos got in here? I guess you did. I guess that means I donated to myself. There you go. See, uh, we're not asking you to do anything we're not doing. Victoria Febo. Yep. Christina Chianki. Luke Klimachewski. Cianci. Jesus. Christina Cianci. Christina Cianci. Luke Klimachewski. Wow. Thank you, Luke. Good good friend of mine. We call Luke is one of my boys I went to college with. We call him Eskimo. <laughs> um, we, no, we call him Klondike. Klondike? Yeah. Uh, Kimberly Vanderwall. Oh, this is an original fucking elite. Kimberly yeah. Vanderwall. Uh, he's, look he's at Dutch. Bardo oh, just got hard. Yeah, Bardo's, Bardo's going to look at her Facebook. And Jonathan L. Washburn. Those are the $5. That's yes, my boy, Jonathan Washburn. We did social work together. Shout out, Jonathan. Thank you, guys, each and every one of you, for donating to our Patreon page. We got additional donations from Bread Brother. No, you got to read the dollar rewards. That was the dollar rewards. No, those were the fives. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dollar rewards are as follows. Uh, we appreciate you guys just as much. Last but not least, Kelly Webb, thank you. Melissa Dawkins, you the, you the girl. Justin Stonebreaker, thank you. Stephanie Gaudru, can you help me with that one? Gaudru? Gaudru? Uh, yeah, Gaudru, right? Stephanie Gaudru. Stephanie, uh, let me see. Yeah, see. Gaudru. Yeah, Stephanie uh, Goudreau. Goudreau. Yeah, That's or a, Gaudreau. Yeah, Gaudreau, thank yeah. you. Jonathan Aruda, thank you. Ninzia? Ninzia. Nzinga. Nzinga. Thank you, girl. I hope that's a girl. Yeah. Natalie Laren, thank you. Nate Chevalier, thank you. Richard Cordero, thank you, cuz. Jessica Lanzola, you're the best. Jonathan Baxley, yas. Larry Pappas. Oh, yeah, it's this guy we jerked. I jerked off on my face for this guy, right? Oh, Larry Pappas, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, anytime you join when we go live, Chris will take dicks to the face. 100%. Cody Cullen, you're the best, you pug ugly. Lisa Mojica, thank you. Gus Ingraciota. Gus Ingraciota, yeah. Gus Ingraciota. Oh, Ingraciota. Ingraciota. RV, you the man. <laughs> Daniel Goldcrantz. Oh, uh -oh. Zach just Isis. got sick. Uh, thank you, Daniel. 
Uh, Pasquale Carafano, thank you. Orestes Varvidiotis. Holy shit. Thank you. Family friend. Appreciate it, Orestes. Ed Yuk. Ed Doc Yuk? Doc D O C Y K. Yuk. Ed yeah. Yuk. Thanks, cuz. Joe Moxley, Zeb Krunloff, and Edwin. Canuelas. Oh, Edwin Canuelas. That's my uh, that's my daughter's uncle. That's that's uh, that's a family. Yeah. That's yeah. That's uh, that's fucking um, yeah. That's my that's my that's my kid's uncle. That's that's uh, that's Jasmine's brother. Thank you, Edwin, so much. Yes. Cause... All right. All right. Adi- you want to do additional? Go ahead. Uh, additional donations. We'd like to thank Bread Brothers Bagel Cafe, Stavros Anaganu, Rich Prado, Brenda Victoria Christie, Virginia Busakis, and Jamilia Musilo. We thank each and every one of you. It's because of you we're continuing to do this, and we're expecting you tell your friends, spread the word, History Hyenas, Bay Ridge Boys episode, what is it, five? Episode five is in, is in production. It's in production, and we're just, we're just having a great time. Oh, it's actually episode six it's is episode in production. Seven, yeah, we got yeah. word from Bardo. It's actually episode six. We've done five. Yeah. Go watch all five. Tell your friends about them. Episode six coming at you. Yep. This is coming every week, Sunday at 6 p.m. These episodes are yes. available. They're up earlier on our Patreon page. If you're a true fucking cuz and you're a member of our cuz community. A true blue gay. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Find me on everything on social media at Chris D. Comedy, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Chris Stefano. You know the deal. Giannis Pappas, one word everywhere. That's it. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!